Hello everyone this is part 8 of what if Naruto was in Sword Art Online, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Shin and Sinan are rushing on the buggy with max speed to the governor general office, with hope that they didn't late. After five minutes of driving, they finally managed to reach the destination. Shin looked at the clock and sigh in relief. We still have five minutes left. Then we are still not late yet. This way, said Sinan in hurry then grabbed Shin's sleeve and dragged him with her. Oi, wait a min, Shin only managed to say, as Sinan was dragging him away. Inside. Sinan is dragging Shin behind her, while Shin was watching in awe at all the sight in front of him. Then Shin began to look around and saw different people, wore various kind of outfit. One of them somewhere out there is Death Gun. Sinan snapped him out of his thought when they reach panel terminal. Here, you can register to the tournament here. It's a normal touch panel terminal. Do you know how to use it? Asked Sinan crossing her hands. Yeah. It looks simple, said Shin looking at the panel terminal. I'll be out there. When you finished, come to me, said Sinan pointed at the place not far from him. Shin read the text on the panel then pressed, entry. Then the lines appeared that need to enter the user personal information appeared. Shin surprised at this and thought, I need to enter my real information here. Then he read the attention line and saw that he can leave it blank, but then he won't be able to get the top prizes. He thought very long and recalled the incident with the three victims then wondered if there were any connections here. He was so deep in thought that he didn't notice a figure approach him from behind. Excuse me, said a voice behind him. Shin twitched in surprise at the voice and pressed the, why, button on instinct turn turned back. Yeah, what can help you, said Shin then he looked to whom he was talking to and saw a very attractive dark skinned girl was standing in front of him. I saw your performance at the, untouchable, and felt really impressed at your skills. Can I know your name? My name is Mana by the way, said Mana smiling politely, she is Tatsumi Yamana from Negama. Oh, I am Shin. Nice to meet you Mana-san, said Shin. So you are participating in Bob as well huh? I am looking forward to see your performance, said Mana. Did you not participating as well, Mana-san? Asked Shin blinking. Of course, but my match will end very quickly, like always. I want to see your ability in battle, Shin-san, said Mana pointing at Shin. Shin just wondered why she said, like always, but then he looked closely at her. Normal person won't be able to say how strong she is by the look, but Shin is different, he can feel the aura that emanating from this girl. She is very strong. Her strength could be compared to Kirito or even on par with himself. Then a shout not far from him was heard. Are you done? Or you are so incompetent that you can't even register to the tournament, shouted Sin and tried to make a fool out of Shin. I am done already. I am just talking with a girl here, Shin shouted back annoyed. Sin and hearing the girl comment decided to approach where he stood and was surprised at who is standing with Shin there. Aren't you the one the people call Suzuki no mana or mana of twin shots? I never expect to see you in Bob, said Sin and looking at the girl. I think it's the first time we met, Hecate. Yeah, I decided to register to the Bob, as being a mercenary is pretty boring. Well, I'll be going now. It's good to meet you, Shin-san. I am looking forward to face you two on the battlefield, said Mana then she turned back, waving her hand as she left. You know who she is? Asked Shin curiously. Only through rumors. She didn't play very often and only performs the mercenary job. The people call her Mana of Twin Shots, because when she killed, she only shot on shot from her guns and the victim is dead. She is extremely dangerous, her ability to dodge bullets may be even on par of yours or even greater. I just hope that I don't need to face her in qualifying round, said Sinan with narrowing eyes. Hey, muttered Shin with excitement in his eyes. By the way, do you know in which block are you? Asked Sinan. Shin looked at the panel and answered. Yeah, F-37. I am in F12. We will meet each other in the finals anyway. Then I will kick your butt for carrying me without permission, said Sinan and point at Shin's face. Oh, and I thought you enjoyed it, said Sheep teasingly. Sinan just turned her head away and stomped to the direction of the qualifying area. Oi, wait a minute. 
shouted Shin and ran to catch up to Sinan. Qualified area. When Sinan and Shin walked inside they saw that most people there was holding guns then they turned the attention to them with a scary look. Shin just looked around calmly. Some people that recognized him began to murmur to themselves. Hey, look, isn't that the kid that got the Hades revolver? Yeah, it's definitely him. Man I wondered how lucky is that kid to actually got it on the first try. Seems you are already pretty famous with they gun alone, said Sinan looking from the corner of her eyes back at him. Shin just sighed at the attention, it becomes so much more troublesome now. Let's go to the waiting room. You need to equip that black cloak you bought. But I will change first then you will be second, understand. If you are even trying to peek, said Sinan then threatening Shin with a scary smirk. Shin just nod his head rapidly while his face was pale. Inside the waiting room, Sinan sat down then sigh. Man, those guys are such idiots. Who the heck is showing off your main weapon 30 minutes before the fight? Then Sinan pressed the button and her clothes disappeared leaving her only in underwear. That moment the door opened and Shin walked in and said. Oh, I almost forgot to ask. What is your, name? Finished Shin the sentence lamely then he began to pale and blush at the sight of Sinan in her underwear. Sinan looked at him in fury with a blush and shouted in rage. Who the heck give you the permission to come in her? She covered herself then leap at Shin and slapped him hard. Then kicked him in the nuts and shoved him outside. Shin was holding his injured part with wide eyes and mumbled. T that was too cruel. Time skip. Sinan just walking ahead of Shin with an annoyed look on her face. Shin was crying comically and still sometimes hold his sensitive part. He wears a black cloak, underneath was nothing, only have a collar on his neck, black's outfit. Don't follow me. I am sorry. It's just. Don't follow me. But I didn't know your name and I don't know what to do next. Sinan stopped then looked at him with a corner of her eyes and sighed loudly. All right, I will explain to you one time, then we are enemies. T thank you, said Shin gratefully. Don't get me wrong. I just want to kick your butt myself. Once that countdown hits zero, all the entrants here will be automatically transferred to a battlefield containing them and their first round opponent. The field itself is a one kilometer square region. The retain, weather, and time are random. You'll start a minimum of 500 meters apart. Once the match ends the winner is sent back here. The loser is sent to the first floor hall. In block F, there are 64 people. So five victories takes you to the finals. Then you can participate in the main tournament, that is Battle Royal, explained Sinan. Thank you. Oh, I still haven't introduced myself right. I am Shin. Nice to meet you, said Shin then bowed his head down. You better get to the finals. I won't forgive you if you lose before facing me. I am Sinan, remember that name, cause I will take you down, said Sinan looking at Shin with a cold look. M. It was only the accident. You shouldn't think that much about that, said Shin nervously scratching the neck of his head. By the way Mana is in C block, so we won't face her here. That's all, we won't talk to each other anymore so bye, said Sinan then prepared to stand up. But the long silver hair guy decided to join them. Yo, you are pretty late Sinan. I was worried you wouldn't make it, said the guy to Sinan. Hi, Spiegel, I got caught up to something unexpected. Didn't you say you weren't going to enter? Said Sinan greeting him then moved aside so Spiegel could sit next to her. Spiegel sat down, scratched his head and said. I thought it might be a pain, but I came to cheer you on. You can watch the match on the big screen after all. By the way what do you mean by, something unexpected? Ah, I just showing this guy the way here, as he is a newbie, answered Sinan rolled her eyes aside. M, nice to meet you, said Shin scratching his head. Whoa. The Avatar model MX9999. That's very rare. You are so lucky, said Spiegel in awe. Um, thanks I guess, said Shin uncomfortably. From afar, Mana was observing Shin. She has changed her gear and her new gear gained a lot of attentions because the surrounding players around her are males. She wears a leather black top that expose her midriff, black panties and a white jeans that exposing her panties. She also wore a long white cloak that reached her feet. Mana's outfit is her Vulneran Semidiavoli Pactio outfit. Well Sinan has helped me out a lot and I am grateful for that, said Shin looking at Sinan and smile. Sinan just turned her head away then said. I didn't help you in anything. Also who the heck give you permission to call me by the name huh? Hey, you are just in deny. 
Stop being so cold and accept the fact that you are attracted to me, said Shin with arrogant smirk. Sin and hearing snapped and point at the smirking face of Shin. Ha, huh, who the heck is attracting to you? You are so arrogant, stubborn and simple mind idiot. Shouted Sin and lean her head forward and snapping at Shin. She was about to continue ranting at Shin, but the announcement was made that the third tournament of Bob has begun and after the entry all players that have registered will be transport to the first round field map. Just that the crowd began to cheer loudly and shoot in the air. Sinan stood up from her sit then point her finger at Shin and declared. Get to the finals. Then I will kick your butt so hard that you will remember for the rest of your life. Shin just smirking arrogantly and said. If you want to battle me so much then I won't disappoint you. Then he stood up and began to walk to the area. He stopped and looked at the corner of his back to Sinan and said seriously. But, I am warning you. When on the battlefield, I am a whole new person. Sinan just wondered about what he said and was about to ask what did he mean. Shin suddenly was transporting away from the place. Unknown place. Shin was standing at the dark place with only the glowing orange pentagram underneath him. He looked at the panel ahead of him that right. Shin versus Yumaru. Remaining time, 56 seconds. Field. Lost ancient temple. Shin equip the blue Kijimitsu G4 and Hades revolver 13 and wait for the time to pass. So Sinan is Shino-chan in GGO-ha. Guess she play this game in order to overcome her bloody past. The count has turned zero and Shin was teleport to his battlefield. Lost ancient temple. Shin looked around him then he breath in and out then said. Finally, after a year I have returned to the battlefield. This anxiety, this field. I hope my opponent can actually entertain me for a while. Shin began to walk ahead slowly looking around for his opponent. Suddenly, he heard the sound at the forest and turned there. Yumaru thought his position was exposed and opened fire from his rifle. Shin saw that all the bullets were aiming at his body very clearly. He took out his photon sword activate it and deflect the bullets with ease. Then he tapped his forehead with index finger and looking at the direction of Yumaru. Yumaru was shocked that this guy managed to deflect all the bullets then he gritted his teeth in anger as Shin tapping his forehead inviting him to shoot there. That action is pretty much mocking him. Yumaru began to fire more shots, this time aiming at Shin's head. Shin just looked at the bullets the flying to him and deflect with his sword once more, not a single bullet has touched him. Yumaru felt shock once more. Who the heck is the guy that has such ability? Oi, is that all you got? I thought things will be more fun. Guess I am gonna finish this quickly, said Shin with a bored look and voice. Yumaru began to feel even more furious at this arrogant bastard. He threw a grenade at Shin and shot at it. The grenade detonated right in front of Shin. Yumaru began to smirk and thought that he has won. Then he felt something pressed against his head from behind. He looked back from the corner of his eyes fearfully and met the cold ruthless eyes of Shin. Tremble in fear and go to hell, said Shin with a voice so cold that Yumaru actually shivered. Then he pressed the trigger and blow Yumaru's head away. Then the panel appeared and right. Congratulations, Shin wins. That was boring. I hope the other four matches will be more challengingly, muttered Shin disappoint with the battle. Then he was teleport away to the starter area. Starter area. Shin has just teleport back then he looked around and saw that Mana is approaching him. When she is in front of him she said. Wow, never knew you could use a photon sword skilled like that. Congratulations on your first win, said Mana. M, thank you, but did you already win your match, Mana-san? Asked Shin. Yeah, 20 minutes ago, answered Mana. Wow, you defeat your opponent in 5 minutes. I am impressed, said Shin in awe. Then he noticed the new gear on Mana and blushed. Mana noticed that and smirked teasingly and asked. So what do you think? Is it suit me well? Shin just nodded his head rapidly. Then he looked at the screens hovering above them and asked. I wonder where is Sinan? Are you worrying about her? Asked Mana raising her eyebrow. No, she won't lost in the qualifying round. I am just curious about her location, said Shin. Suddenly, he jumped back as he felt a presence behind him. Mana also looked at his back with narrowing eyes. At the back of Shin stood no other than Death Gun. Are you that person? Asked Death Gun slowly. Shin looked at Death Gun closely and began to analyze. So this is Death Gun. Indeed he remind me of someone. That strange black cloak. Why did he always wore so that it hide all his body and face? What do you mean by, 
That person? Asked Shin suppressing his anger he is feeling just by looking at Death Gun. Death Gun began to approach Shin slowly, that caused Shin to take out his photon sword. I saw your fight. You used the sword mainly right. Those eyes, that sword, that mastery. I'll ask again. Are you that person? Shin began to recall the three members and compare them to Death Gun. But he can't recall much as it was two years ago. Mana just stood there and watching the scene in silence with Naro's eyes. Suddenly, Death raises his hand slightly exposing the mark of Laughing Coffin. Shin seeing that Mark eyes widen in rage and the killing intent began to leak out of him in waves. He recall all the people that was killed by Laughing Coffin, how Karadil nearly killed Kirito in front of his eyes, how Po had managed to injure him. He began to glare at Death Gun. There is no mistake now. This is the revenge of Laughing Coffin against me. There is an uncomfortable silence between Death Gun and Shin. Death Gun just looked at Shin, while Shin is glaring at Death Gun slightly. I repeat once again. Are you that person? Shin tried to calm himself down as much as he can and asked. What do you mean by, that person? I don't understand what are you trying to ask? Who are you anyway? You really don't understand. Shin just nod his head slowly. Then that's fine. But whether you are that person or just an imitator. I will kill you, said Death Gun before walking away. When Death Gun passed him, Shin's eyes widen in rage and clutch his knuckle tightly. Why can I recall him? He is definitely one of those three. But it's been two years already, so I can't recall their face. Kuso, I am so frustrated now, thought Shin angrily and punches the wall. Mana decided to approach Shin and asked if he was okay. Are you alright? Who is that guy? Shin turned his head to Mana and said. Remember this Mana. If you ever meet the person with black cloak and a skeleton mask. Stay away from him as far as possible, said Shin seriously. Mana just blinked in surprise at the statement. That moment Sinan decided to walk to him. You don't look like you are tired. What's with your expression? Asked Sinan. Shin turned to Sinan and warned her also. You too, Sinan. Don't ever trying to face the guy in skeleton mask and black cape. He is Death Gun. The one that could truly kill you IRL. No matter how sure you are that you can win. Never approached or try to shoot him down. Not only you will failed, but he will turn his attention to you as well. Sinan just turned her head away and said. I don't need you to worry about me. Just get to the. But she was interrupted by Shin's shout. That is not a joke. If you want to live you will listen to my warning. Sinan and Mana looked surprised at Shin. He never been this serious before, just joke around and being a team. Then he was transported away to his second match. Round 2. Battlefield. Shin appeared at the battlefield and began to recall the face of Death Gun. His blood began to boil by just the memory. The bullets began to head at him with great speed. Shin's eyes were shadowed by the shadow and he just took out his photon sword and on instinct deflected all the bullets. Death Gun, muttered Shin walked slowly to his opponent. His opponent continued to shoot at him, but no use. All the bullets were deflected, Shin hasn't been injured even once. Death. Gun. Shin continued to move to his opponent with the hair still shadowing his eyes. Then he looked up and his eyes gleamed dangerously. He disappeared from his place and appeared right in front of his opponent. His opponent was too shocked to say anything. He could only look into those merciless eyes of Shin. Eliminate, said Shin emotionlessly and used his photon sword and took off the opponent's head. Then he looked down at the headless avatar of his avatar with the same expression. Time skip. Round 4. Battlefield. While his opponent was hiding and tried to ambush his opponent. Shin was walking slowly to his opponent with a cold smirk on his face. His opponent began to fire at Shin upon seeing his target is near him. Shin smirking a cold smirk the whole time and deflecting the bullets. His opponent decided to throw a grenade at Shin. Before the grenade managed to explode Shin jumps up in the air and deflect the grenade to his opponent. His opponent was shocked at that action and the grenade detonate right in front of him. At the starter area, people looked at the fights on the screens. They looked at the screen of Shin's battle and noticed that he was not injured, not even once. Sinan, Spiegel and Mana watching Shin's match very intently. He was not injured even once. His skills with the sword is mind-blowing, said Mana looking at the match. Not only that, he didn't even use his gun. What the heck is that guy to possess such skills? Asked Spiegel very impressed by Shin's performance. Sinan just looked at the match in silence and thought. 
his strength. That is the strength beyond virtual world. I want to win against him so badly now. If I can win against such a strong guy, then maybe I can even surpass Naruto-san. Maybe then I can overcome my past and live a normal life. He is in the semi-final already. If you want to face him, you need to win as well. Good luck, Sinan, said Spiegel and wish her luck. Round 5. Battlefield. Sinan is on the roof of one building. She opened her monocular on the Hecate and waited for her opponent to show himself. She aimed her rifle on the road below. My opponent is Stinger. He uses an FN Scar carbine rifle as his main weapon. Since I am a sniper, if he gets close to me, I'll have no chance. But on this map, if he wants to get close to me, he has to pass through there. Then I'll finish him off. Sinan prepared to snipe then she remembered Shin's matches. He said something that when on battlefield he is a completely different person. It seems I begin to understand what he means. Suddenly, Sinan heard a sound and shoot from her Hecate. But she was fooled by her opponent. Sinan looked surprised at that. Suddenly, a military car appeared and began to move ahead. So that's it. He wanted me to watered my first shot to make me expose my position and used that chance to get close to me. Sinan quickly recharged her rifle and aimed it at the window of the car. But I can still saw the first bullet's path. My second shot will be even more accurate. With Sinan opened fire and shot through the window, killing the player inside as well. The car slammed into the building in front of it and explodes. Then the panel appeared that right. Congratulations, Sinan wins. With that Sinan was transport to the preparing area. She looked up at the panel that right. Sinan versus Shin. Field. Intercontinental Highway. Sinan narrowed her eyes in determination and waited for the time to pass. Final round. Battlefield. Sinan just appeared to the battlefield. She looked around to determine where Shin will appear. Then she ran inside the bus and waited for her target to appear. He will certainly trying to get close to me unnoticed, like others. But his reaction time in dodging bullets surpass any one that I know, but the shot of Hecate is different. It is far accurate and faster than other weapons. My chance is the first shot, when he doesn't know my location, thought Sinan and prepared to snipe her target when he will appear. She looked into the monocular ahead and thought. This time. This time if I manage to defeat such a strong person maybe. Far ahead of Sinan location, Shin just walked ahead to her with the hair shadowed his eyes. Sinan looked through her monocular and thought incredulously. Does he think he can dodge my bullets whenever he wants? Shin continued to move to her location. Sinan began to shoot at him through her Hecate. Shin saw the bullets coming at him clearly and moved his head aside to dodge. Sinan was shocked at that action. How? How can he dodge my shot from Hecate easily like that? She began to fire at him multiple times. This time Shin just walked forward and all the bullets just missed him with incredible way. Sinan began to feel shock even more. Who the heck is he? Does he not fear death at all? How can I win against such a person? Sinan began to pant heavily. Shin decided to look up and showed his face. That was not the face of Hitokiri Batasai, but the face of Naruto Yuki Uzumaki. Sinan began to shot more from Hecate, but all the shots missed as she has lost her calm expression. Shin just stood there and looked at her location the whole time. The more she shoots the more she missed. And it began to frustrate her. She decided to step out from her hiding place to confront Shin. Why? Why can't I shoot you? Why all my shots missed you? Shouted Sinan glaring daggers at Shin. The reason is simple. Deep in your heart, you began to care for me. That's why you can't shoot at me Sinan, no Shino-chan, said Shin looking at Sinan's face. Sinan's eyes began to widen hearing her real name was called by this person. How the heck do you know my real name? And what nonsense are you talking about? Me, caring for you, shouted Sinan pointing at Shin. Anyway if it were an hours ago, I will accept it to fight you seriously. But the situation has changed, I just want to get to main tournament. I don't want to fight you here. As for how do I know your real name? I think you already have realized by yourself who I am by the way I call you right. Said Shin walking slowly to Sinan. Sinan recalled the only person called her Shino-chan was Naruto. She widened her eyes and muttered. Naruto, why are you in GGO? Why didn't you tell that you log in? Shin just nod his head in affirmative and said. My identity should remain a secret. It's a long story why I logged in GGO. 
For short, I was invited her by death gun, in order to be killed by him. Also I am here to correct my past mistake, answered Shin. Why? Why don't you want to fight me? Am I so weak that you not even bother to consider fighting? Shouted Sinan with tears running down her eyes. No, I know you are strong Shino-chan. The reason is that you are my precious friend as well. And I don't want to hurt my precious people even in the virtual game, said Shinan smiling softly at her. I want to become strong. I want to make Sinan stronger than you in Sal, that's why I need to fight stronger people to become stronger. But no matter how strong I become, your strength just overwhelmed mine with ease. How do you manage to obtain such strength? I need it in order to overcome my bloody past, shouted Sineb desperately. Shin's eyes were shadowed by his hair again. This strength has a very high cost. Hundreds of people in Sao was dead for me to obtain this strength. This strength I am possesses is cursed Shino-chan. Because of this strength I have a split personality. Myself and Hitokiri Batasai. I told you already Shino-chan, true strength come when you are protecting the precious people to you, said Shin. I don't have any precious people. I am alone my whole life. But even so I will become stronger, said Sinan with determination. Shin just sighed then took out his Hades. Sinan seeing that and prepared to fight. But Shin just raised his hand to tell her calm down. He took out the bullet and showed Sinan then said. I will give you one more chance to defeat me. This time concentrate all your concentration on this shot. We will do it dual style. We'll move 10 meters away and you'll ready your rifle and me my sword. I will toss this bullet up and when it hits the ground, the match begins. How does that sound? Sinan just blinked her eyes and replied. Listen, at a mere 10 meters, even you won't be able to dodge the shot from this Hecate. At this range, it has 100% hit rate. Shin just smirked at her and said. We won't know until we try. Sinan just looked at his confident face and thought. Does he actually some kind of plan? I want to see what is it no matter what. Okay, I accept that challenge. We can finish his things this way, said Sinan. With that Shin began to move away from her to a certain distance. Sinan recharged her rifle and aimed at Shin. Shin showed the bullet and tossed it in the air. Then he took out his photon sword and stood in a stance. As the bullet hits the ground, Sinan opened fire from her Hecate. Shin pointed the tip of his sword to the ground and muttered. Hitten Mitsurugi Ryu, Doryusen. With that the earthen debris created by Doryusen blow the bullet of Sinan away with knocking force. T that. That just impossible. Muttered Sinan and falling in her knees in shock. She snapped out of her shock and took out her gun from behind. Suddenly, she felt the sword on her neck. Shin was standing behind her holding her waist. I was aiming at your leg. How do you know that I will fire there? Asked Sinan. Would you believe me if I said I could see where the bullet was fired clearly, said Shin and turned her around so that he could look at her face. He did not predict it where I will shot, but could see it clearly. How can that even be possible? He really deserved to be a legend. This strength is the strength that far surpassed the virtual world, thought Sinan at shock and in awe. If you are this strong, that what makes you so work up? Asked Sinan silently. Even the strongest afraid of death Shino-chan. I warned you about the skeleton mask guy, because he could kill for real. Of course it is a trick, but that doesn't change the fact that he could kill you in real life through the game. He is after me. I am the his main target. That's why I wanted you to stay away from him as far as possible, said Shin leaned his forehead to her and looked deeply in her eyes. Sinan just blushed, but also looked into his ocean eyes. Listen, Shino-chan. Sinan and you are one and the same. You must believe in yourself. Sinan is not strong enough to defeat me because she is missing a part of her. When you become complete, by accepting the fact that you are one and the same. You will become much stronger than you are now, said Shin touching her chin gently. Sinan just looked at him silently. Then he backed away and said. On the main tournament, don't approach me. I will be very different from what I know. On the main tournament, Hitokiri Batasai will be officially revived, said Shin emotionlessly and his eyes gleaming dangerously. Sinan just widened her eyes at the change of his expression and eyes. Shin's face returned to normal and he said grinning. Well, I win the duel. So you should forfeit now. Sinan blinked then glaring daggers at Shin. She pointed her finger at Shin and declared. I won't lose any more. So prepare yourself. With that she opened the resign menu and surrendered. At the starter area, people saw who was the winner and felt shock.
Someone had managed to win against Hecate. Mana smirked at this and said, I can't wait to face you on the battlefield at the main tournament Shin San. Only by defeating you, I will be satisfied. Far from him, Death Gun watched the match and witnessed the performance of Doryusen. There is no mistake now. He is definitely Hitokiri Batasai. The main tournament will be your grave. Ha 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 ha. GGO. Starter area. Shin has reappeared back at the area. Sinan was already logged out, out of frustration. Shin looked around the area then stopped Hu gaze at Mana. He decided to approach her. On the way, he accidentally looked aside and saw the glowing red eyes of Death Gun in the crowd. His eyes widened at that and he began to curse himself in his mind. Kuso, I was too careless and now he knew my identity. But I didn't have other choice. The last shot that Shino-chan performed was very dangerous. Even if I said that I could see where the bullet was heading, didn't mean that I could actually dodge that shot. That's why the only way to deflect that shot was to perform Doryusen. PGM Ultima Ratio Hecate 2, what a fearsome weapon. If I was a lesser player, there was no way I could have deflect that shot. I need to think of the plan immediately. Or else his life will be forfeit. Mana saw that Shin approach her and decided to congratulate him. Congratulations on being the winner of the F block Shin San, said Mana. Thanks. But I am here for a favor. Well, what can I help you? You are a mercenary, so you must know the place where you could order the custom weapon right? Asked Shin. Yeah. Why do you ask? I want order a new weapon. Could you please took me to the place where you can order the custom weapon? Said Shin. Okay, I will show you the way. But only if you promise that we will fight in the main tournament one on one, said Mana smirking sexily. I know you would say something like that. Okay, I accept, said Shin smiling at her. With that Shin and Mana walked out of the Governor General office. Luke's Super Weapon Shop. Shin and Mana stopped at the door that read, Luke's Super Weapon Shop. Shin looked at the panel and sweat dropped anime style. Mana just grinned at him and said, Yeah, the owner of this shop is pretty self-conscious. But he can make a very high quality weapons. With that they came inside. Shin looked at the cellar cabin and saw a boy his age with brown hair, a ponytail at his back. He wore a white shirt and a black cape over it and blue pants, Luke Ainsworth from Saken no Blacksmith. Yo, Luke, I've brought you a new client here, greeted Mana and pointed her finger behind at Shin. Oh, Mana, long time no see. A new client, huh? So what do you need, dear customer? Luke greeted Mana then turned to Shin to ask him a question. Shin approached the cabin, took out his Kijimitsu G4 and said. I'd like for you to recreate this Kijimitsu G4 to a katana with sheaths. The sharp edge of the blade will be made of photon beam. Can you do it? The price didn't matter. I will pay you any price. Luke took the photon sword and inspected it for a while. Then he turned to Shin and replied. That won't be a problem. Though the cost will be pretty high, as this a custom made. But you really surprised me. Why do you using a sword in GGO? Shin looked at Luke and said. Well, let's just say I wield a sword better than a gun. And I have my own reason to log in GGO. Anyway it's a pleasure to do business with you Luke San, said Shin and bowed his head. Me too. The sword will be ready by tomorrow. You participate in Bob Wright. Shin just nodded his head. I will try to deliver it to you in time. Thank you very much. With that Shin and Mana left the place. On the way, Shin decided to ask Mana a favor. Mana-san, I want to face Death Gun one-on-one. -on -one. If by some chance, Sinan decided to interfere. I want you to, said Shin then paused a little to close his eyes. He sighed and decided to finish the sentence. Kill her. Mana widened her eyes at that and decided to ask. Why would you like for me to kill her? Isn't she important to you? I thought that you will try to protect her. It's because she is important to me, that I need her to stay away from that battle. Death Gun has already found out about my identity. That's why I want you to promise me that if she decided to intervene. Kill her. I wouldn't be able to do it myself that's why I am asking you to do that for me. And when I kill Death Gun, we will have a match as I promised, explained Shin his reason. Mama just looked at Shin for a while then said. Okay, if that's what you must do to protect her then I will help you. But I won't forgive you, if you by some chance killed by death gun. I promise that I will have a match with you right. I never go back on my words. Well, I'll log out now. 
See you tomorrow, Mana san, said Shin and pressed the logged out button. Hospital. Naruto opened his eyes and saw a very strange scene in front of him. The nurse Aki's head was on his bare chest and she was drooling. Naruto sweat dropped but also blushing madly as her chest moved up and down. Naruto shook his head to clear his head. That moment Aki decided to wake up and rubbing her eyes. She yawned and looked sleepily to Naruto. Oh. Naruto-kun. You just returned right. Naruto just nodded his head dumbly. Forgive me for sleeping in your chest. Just that I was very tired and bored when waiting for you to return, so I decided to take a nap. I touched your chest and found it so comfortable, so I decided to sleep on it, said Aki smiling brightly and stuck her tongue out playfully. Naruto just sighed at that. Then he began to pale remembered that he has two girlfriends and if they knew what is going with him and Aki, then his life is already forfeit, before death gun can shoots at him. M. Aki-san. I'd like to return home for a while, said Naruto scratching his head. Okay. Just return here in time okay. Said Aki and poking his bare chest. Naruto covered his chest on instinct and sigh. Yuki residence. Naruto just step in the Yuki residence. He went to the kitchen, when he smelled the delicious smell. He went inside and saw Azuna was cooking while humming. I am home Nei chan said Naruto behind Azuna. Azuna turned around and surprised to see Naruto there. Naruto, when did you return? So how is the investigation? It's okay for now, but I am pretty hungry now. I'd like to taste your awesome cooking, said Naruto rubbing his stomach and raised his thump up grinning. Azuna smiled at that and said, hi, hi, wait for a minute. Then Azuna brought the pan of paella to the table. Naruto began to drool hungrily. Azuna just smirked at that. Here, eat as much as you can. Itadaki mas, said Naruto and dig in. Azuna just looked at Naruto eating his food and smiled. Suddenly, she decided to ask. Any, Naruto, if you are the participant of the bob, why didn't I see your name in the list? Naruto swallowed and answered. That's cause I didn't use the real name Nei-chan. Can you guess who am I in the list? Naruto asked with a smirk in his face. Azuna took out the magazine and began to look into it. She looked at the list for a while and didn't has any idea what his name could be. Then she remembered all the Shinigami posters in his room. She smirked and pointed at the name, Shushan. Naruto blinked then sigh. You've got me now. Azuna grinning and shows the victory sign to Naruto's face. Thank you for the food. I will be in my room. I need to make some things clear, said Naruto and left the kitchen. Azuna looked at Naruto's back worriedly. He definitely hides something dangerous from her. But she didn't know what. She knew Kirito knows something, but he refused to tell her. Whatever you are doing, please, be careful Naruto. Naruto's room. Naruto decided to check the official web of GGO to find the rare weapons list. He found the list of all the Roman numerals weapons. Suddenly, he stopped at the metamaterial optical camouflage mantle. The picture of the cloak looked exactly like the one death gun wore, which got Naruto's attention. He began to read the description. Metamaterial optical camouflage mantle has the ability to hide the user from both players and monsters by refracting the light that shines on its surface and it is said to be the ultimate camouflage ability, which only the high-level boss's monsters have. The ability also allows the user to cloak their weapon after preparing it, making it possible for the user to shoot while invisible. Additionally, the cloak prevents the user from being detected by the satellite scan during Bob. The ability of the mantle also works within towns. The last phrase makes Naruto to thought even more. Then his eyes widen in realization. First, the abnormal timing of the victims, which are the same as the time the avatars were shot. Second, the invisible mantle that can be used even within towns. Third, all the victims didn't die by fried brain, but by the heart attack. Naruto narrowed his eyes and began to deduce. So that's it. Death Gun is actually not one person, but maybe two or even more person. He used his mantle to sneak behind the victims to find out about their addresses. Then he informed to his accomplices so that they can get to the victims in the real world. The death gun in game will make a signal sign for the accomplices IRL to act. The accomplices will inject the drug to the victim, which caused the heart attack. That's the secret of the phantom bullet. The secret of killing a person through the game, of death gun. Then Naruto began to think even further. But I am his main target. And he already knew my identity. 
Therefore he will definitely find out about my location, with or without the information in panel terminal. I need to act now. With that Naruto began to call Kikoka. Kikuoka-san. I'd like to change my research location to my old house. Yeah, I can't tell you everything. But I can tell you that I've exposed the secret of killing through the game of Death Gun. I will fill in the report. Thank you very much. Naruto called Kirito next. Oh, Naruto. You've already returned from the GGO. So how did things there? Asked Kirito through the phone. Good to hear you as well, Kirito. I've managed to find out the secret of Death Gun. Though I did blew my cover already. You know my avatar's name in GGO right? Said Naruto. What? You've already blown your cover. Yeah, I know your name. There is not much players that used a sword and can cause the earth and debris. So what are you gonna do now? Asked Kirito seriously. Listen carefully, Kirito. This operation is operation may sound ridiculous, but it will definitely work. I will tell you one thing though. In this operation, my whole life will be depending on you. If you are even a second late, the operation will fail and I will die instantly, said Naruto in a very serious voice. Kirito widened his eyes in the other side and began to ask carefully. W what kind of operation that has such a high risk to your life? Nothing will happen to me if the plan will succeed. Here is the plan, said Naruto and began to inform Kirito about his plan. At the park, Shino and Kyuji were sitting on the swing and swinging up and down. Kyuji looked at Shino and find her behavior really strange. Asada-san, you are quieter than usual. Did something happen? Asked Kyuji worriedly. Shino was thinking about Naruto's words during their match. He said that she couldn't become stronger, because Sinan didn't accept her real self, as she couldn't accept that she can ever become Sinan. Ha. Huh. Oh. Sorry Shinkawa-kun. I was thinking about something, answered Sinan turning to Kyuji. Did it something that happened during your last match against Shin-san? Asked Kyuji then clutch his knuckle at the memory of Shin embraced Sinan and touched her forehead with his. Yeah, he said something like, I couldn't become stronger because I didn't accept me and Sinan were one and the same. That I need to accept that Sinan is me, and she is me, only then I can grow stronger. When I think about it, it actually makes sense cause my true self always running away and hide my eyes under these glasses. While Sinan is trying to deny my true self as she is weak in her eyes, muttered Shino. But how can you become Sinan if just only the sight of the gun will make you panic? Asked QG. I don't know. I don't know, muttered Shino and shook her head. Hospital. Naruto decided to tell Nurse Aki that from now he will do the investigation alone, as the operation that he has planned need him to be alone in the room. He knock at the door then heard, come in. He came in the room and said. Good evening, Aki-san. Aki reading some files looks up from her work and sees Naruto standing there. Naruto-kun. What are you doing here? The tournament will start tomorrow, you know. Naruto went to Aki and answered. I know Aki-san. I just want to tell you that from now, I will do the investigation alone. Aki blinked in surprise and asked. Why is that? Is it because of me? Did I made you feel uncomfortable? Naruto waves his hands in deny and shakes his head. No it's nothing like that. I enjoy your company very much. It's just that from now on the situation will be much more dangerous. That's why I decide to finish the investigation alone. Of course, I already asked Kikuoka-san permission and he approved. Aki looked worried when Naruto said dangerous. What do you mean dangerous? Will your life be in danger? Naruto just looked away then said solemnly. I created a plan that forced me to be in danger in order for it to work. When it end everything will return to normal again. Aki decided to hug Naruto and muttered. Just be careful, Naruto-kun. Remember, that you are not alone. You have friends and family that waiting for you. Naruto just buried himself in her embrace and said. Yes, I know that. But I need to correct my past mistake no matter what happen. Shino's apartment. Shino arrived at her apartment. After changing her clothes, she lied on her bed for a while looking at the ceiling. Then she decided to stand up and went to the mirror to look at herself. She slowly took off her glasses to reveal her eyes. To accept myself ha, huh? muttered Shino touched the mirror. Then she recalled the talk with Naruto about finding the precious person to become stronger. Then the moment, when Shin hold to her waist and touched his forehead with hers. She wondered why she didn't push him away that instant. 
she remembered his sky blue eyes that looked at her aqua eyes with so much emotion. Unconsciously, she began to think that Naruto is the precious person to her. Because he experienced the same emotion as her when kill. But not like her, he managed to move on, despite his experience was hundreds times more horrible. Naruto is the one that understand her the most. And Shin is Naruto. With that thought, she closed her eyes before the mirror. Suddenly, in a black space Sinan appeared in front of her. She looked at her avatar and slowly raised her hand. Sinan doing the same action. When the two palms touched each other, Sinan said. Naruto is right. I can't become stronger because I always try to deny you because of your weakness. But I also forget that you are me. That's why I can't use my full power. The full power of Hecate. But now I think I understand why. It's time for us to become one, Asada Shino. Shino looked at her avatar and replied. I too always run away from the reality, that's why I created you in order to be stronger. But by doing so, the real me began to lose the remain courage that I possessed. I always let those girls bullying me and just accept it silently. Naruto has opened my eyes once again. You are me. And I am you. With that Shino and Sinan began to glow. After the glow ended, there stood Asada Shino but she has the confident eyes of Sinan and without the glasses. Reality. Shino opened her eyes then took her glasses off then looked herself again in the mirror. I feel so confident now. The shyness and uncertainty is all gone. So this is the real me. Such an amazing felling. To feel yourself complete. Then she thought of something. She went to the drawer and opened it to reveal to model of the gun. Shino looked at it for a while took a deep breath and slowly reached to it. Slowly she picked up the gun to hold it for a while. Shino blinked then began to smile widely, as she didn't throw up or shake out of fear. It's gone. My fear of the guns is gone now. Cheered Shino loudly then laugh heartily. Then she makes a shooting sign and said to no one particular. Just you wait Naruto. This time I will pay back twice over. Then she lied down to her bed and began to think. Why did the thought of Naruto give so much courage? Why? When I think about him I feel like I can trust him. Also what is this strange feeling in the stomach? What is going on with me? Next day. Naruto's old apartment. Naruto sat on the bed holding the Amusphere in his hands. All the devices are already ready. Naruto looked at the Amusphere and sighed. It's time to end things once and for all. He lied down on the bed then muttered. The success of the operation and my life depend entirely on you Kirito. I am counting on you. With that he wore the Amusphere on his head and said. Link start. Allo. Dream field. The party consists of Klein, Silica, Leafa and Lisbeth were fighting against a huge poison salamander. The salamander used his tail and strike down but the party managed to dodge. Silica looked down at the ground and asked. Klein San, are you okay? I am okay. Said Klein smirking and catch the salamander's tail. While I am holding him in one place. Everyone hit him with everything you got, said Klein. In midair, Lisbeth just rolled her eyes and said. Who did he want to impress I wonder. Klein San, get him, said Yui cheering for Klein. Klein San, fight, cheered Wendy on Liz's shoulder. On the ground, Klein just smirked confidently and raised his thump up. This is an easy prey. Then the salamander decided to turn its head and release the poison smoke enveloping Klein. Klein was hit by the poison breath and began to lose HP. Whoa, poison, Klein San. Shouted Silica seeing Klein was in trouble. Oi, Kirito, help me out a bit, shouted Klein. When Kirito didn't respond, he decided to call Azuna. But she too was deep in thought. Kirito and Azuna were deep in thought. Kirito was thinking of Naruto's plan. It's definitely a very high risk plan for Naruto's life, if he even late for a bit then everything will be over. Azuna looked at Kirito and suspect that he knew something. She also guessed that Naruto not wanting for them to involve, told Kirito to keep quiet. Even though Naruto is not actually her blood brother, she still treat him like one. Azuna-san. Kirito. I am at my limit already. Shouted Klein his HP bar is at red zone. That moment both Kirito and Azuna snapped back to reality. Kirito charged forward used horizontal to cut the salamander, while Azuna used a high level healing spell to heal Klein. The salamander was cut in half by Kirito's strike. Klein sigh in relief at that. Sorry, I was in deep thought, said Kirito scratching the back of his head. Me too. 
I shouldn't have spaced out in the middle of the battle, apologized Azuna bowing her head. Well, it's almost time for Naruto-san's tournament, said Silica cheerfully. I know for sure that my Naruto-kun will kick so many asses, said Lisbeth smirking widely. Naruto-kun will win the tournament. I know he will win, said Leifa confidently. Tu-san is super strong and will not lose to anyone, said Wendy smiling brightly. The only two person that didn't talk anything was Kirito and Azuna. Kirito was afraid, he can't believe that Naruto entrust his life to him when he himself will be in virtual world. He afraid to fail his friend then he will felt guilty for the rest of his life. Azuna also looking in the sky and prayed. Please Naruto, whatever you do please return safely. There are so many people waiting for you. Then Klein's statement snapped then out of their thought. Well, let's go back to our room in Yggdrasil City. Yeah, with that they all flew up to their destination. GGO. Shin arrived at the Luke Super Weapon Shop and went in. He saw Luke already sitting at the bench, so he decided to approach him. Is my sword ready, Luke San? Oh, Shin, you are here already. Yeah, it's ready. Do you want yo have a glance at it? Asked Luca and took out a sword with a sheath in white color. Shin nod his head then picked it up then unsheathed the sword to look at the blade. The sword has the normal katana handle. But the blade itself was like Gundam Destiny's blade, only a much smaller version. Shin looked at the sword in awe and tried some movement. Luke smirks at that and asked. Are you satisfied with my work? I called this sword Murasame Z0. Shin sheathed the sword back then bowed down in gratitude. I thank you die this masterpiece. So how much is that sword? Luke looked at Shin and said. I will only take from you 300.000 credits. And I want you to win with my sword. Cause I am gonna bet a lot of money on you, my friend. Shin smirked at that and said. Then I won't disappoint you. Good luck with your work. Then Shin paid for the sword and walked out of the shop. He put Murasame to the inventory. As he walked, he began to think. Yes, with this sword Hitokiri Batasai is officially revived. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.